Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sean Deaver, and today I'm going to spend a little time talking about payroll, which for most of you is a pretty important part of your business and also a pretty expensive part of your business. So today we're going to talk about a few best practices, and more importantly, we're going to talk about the Jackrabbit and Express payroll integration. It's a time clock and full payroll solution that are fully integrated and um, many, many, many clients using Jackrabbit are have jumped onto the Express Payroll um, service, and uh, we, we'd like to spend a little time sharing some of the benefits of it, and also some of the some of the things that we've learned by being able to service and support so many of you in your payrolls. Uh, my name is Sean Deaver. For those that I uh, that haven't heard me speak before. Um, my, as I said, my name is Sean Deaver, and I'm a, a CPA and consultant, and and also the owner of Express Payroll. We're a full service payroll solution. We work with thousands of clients all across the country, and uh, very, very happy and proud to be a part of the Jackrabbit um, family of partners and uh, being able to help you with your needs uh, on the financial and accounting side of your businesses. Today, for a quick agenda, because it's a short time today, we're just going to talk about a few things high level. And if anyone wants to follow up on uh, our services, whether it be payroll or accounting type services, or if you have questions on the slide decks or things that we talked about, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'll have my contact information at the end. You can always find us on the Jackrabbit Preferred Partner list as well. Today, we're going to talk again briefly about the employee retention tax credit. For those of you who haven't heard of it, staffing issues and shortages, remote workers, owner's comp, as well as workers' compensation, some payroll benchmarks for you to take away, see how you're doing against your peers. And then again, I want to talk about the time clock and payroll integration with Jackrabbit and Express Payroll. Briefly, for those of you who haven't heard of the employee retention tax credit, and I'm sure by now most, if not all of you have, this is just a credit that's available for you. If you're a small business owner and you were impacted during COVID negatively, then I just want you to be aware that you are more than likely eligible for the retention tax credit. Whether you got PPP or not, whether you got it twice, whether you got the idle loan, it doesn't matter. You're still eligible for the retention tax credit more than likely. Now, if your business did better during the pandemic, well, then unfortunately, you're most likely not eligible. But if you were negatively impacted, I would highly encourage you to reach out to either us here at Express Payroll or your professionals uh, that support you, your CPAs <clears throat> um, and so on, because there are a lot of nuances that, in el that make you eligible for the credit and it is free money, folks. So if you haven't heard of the credit, if you have any questions, if someone told you you weren't eligible, please don't hesitate to reach out to us for a second opinion, because this is money that's expiring and it's free. So I really encourage you to get it if you haven't already. Moving on, staffing shortages. We're all experiencing this in every industry, even today, several years after the pandemic is, you know, quote unquote, behind us. Um, what this is causing people in our industry, the gym, the swim, the dance, the music, the theater, the karate type industries, this is causing us to make some knee jerk reactions. Uh, we are putting in pay rate hikes, not that they're necessarily a bad thing. They may be needed, but they're certainly things that we need to make sure we're paying attention to. There have been substantial pay rate hikes going through. We need to ensure that we don't just go throwing money out across the board. We need to be very methodical in the way we're handling this and how we're treating it. Owners on average in the last 18 months have increased wages over 11.2% for non-managerial employees. And that's coming direct from our database, which has over 75,000 employees in the industries, again, that I mentioned earlier, gym, swim, dance, and so on. So remember, payroll is your biggest expense. If you're throwing an 11% pay increase out there, if your payroll is 300 grand, this is a $33,000 increase to your annual costs. If your payroll is 400,000, this is an F, on average $44,000 increase to that expense line item. So please be careful. Ensure that when you do these wages that you're paying attention to them, these raises, and that you're focused on not only the expense side of it, but ensure that you have the revenue to go along with it. Otherwise, this could cause for some rainy days in the future.
So make sure that you're um, taking it, paying attention to these, talking it through with your professionals. But I wanted to share with you that I know the shortage is real. I know it still exists. And this is what we're seeing throughout the industries um, on a pay percent increase. In terms of remote working, this is also due to the pay, due to the staff shorting, this is causing remote work to increase. There is a huge reallocation going on in these, even in these economies. I know you can't teach a gymnastics class or teach a ballet class from, you know, Texas if your business is in, you know, Minnesota. However, <clears throat> we are seeing office people get, re, um, you know, being able to get hired outside of state. We are seeing some people reach across the borders and find staff and sometimes doing things online and so forth. So it's important. The reason I bring it up, it's really important to understand that if you're going to hire someone who's outside your state, you need to ensure that you have registered your company in the state that you've hired in. So as an example, I'm in Massachusetts. If I'm going to hire <clears throat> remote workers in Rhode Island, then I need to register my business in Rhode Island. If I'm going to have an employee, perhaps, who works in my front desk or helps me with some marketing uh, or some social media stuff, and this person is going to move to Florida because they've they've found a nice property down there, maybe was relocated due to spouse reasons or what have you. Um, if I'm going to retain that individual and that person is going to work remotely in Florida, then I have to register my Massachusetts-based business in the state of Florida. If you're not, this is going to cause problems for you in the future. So please ensure that if you are hiring people outside of your state, that you have notified the proper people, your payroll folks, your, uh, your CPAs, and so on, to ensure that this is taken care of. Because again, it could get cause you a lot of problems in the future. Next, I'm going to talk about owner's compensation. Now, this is kind of a leftover from the COVID uh, scenario. We had employers themselves, the actual owners, putting themselves on payroll to utilize things like the PPP. I want to remind people, and I just have it here, a quick slide, that if you are a sole proprietor, you may not be on payroll. You are not an eligible for a paycheck if you are a sole proprietor. This could be an LLC sole proprietor or just a DBA sole proprietor. Additionally, if you're a partnership, perhaps an LLC taxed as a partnership or just a traditional partnership, you are also the partners are not allowed to be paid via payroll. They are entitled to owner's draws and owner's distributions, but not a paycheck. So if you're a sole proprietor or a partnership or an LLC taxed as a sole proprietor or a partnership, ensure that you are not paying yourself through a payroll and make sure that you speak with your payroll service to ensure this is not done. How, conversely, if you're a corporation, this could be a C Corp or an S Corp or an LLC taxed as an S Corp then owners are required to be on the payroll. They are required to be issued a W-2. They need to be on the payroll, just like the regular old standard employee. So just want to quickly give this out there because during the pandemic, some things that happened where people who didn't traditionally got checks hopped on the payroll, people that got checks to hop off the payroll and so on. So I want to make sure that owners that are listening to this are aware of the rules. And I will say these are the legal rules. So you are you know, creating issues if you're not following the rules that are outlined in these three bullets. Workers' compensation, again, <clears throat> something that we saw during the pandemic, we saw, and now post-pandemic, we saw a lot of workers' comps consolidate um, uh, compensation rates and, and what they call compensation codes. So one thing that we do as a payroll service and a payroll provider Obviously, we ensure that the owners are on the payroll the right way. We also ensure that workers' comp rates are reasonable and in accordance with your industry standard. <clears throat> now, if you're using a large payroll provider, one of the big national brands, they are not likely doing this. They're, not, they're actually definitely not doing any type of comparison for you to see how you're looking from a workers' comp perspective. They can't. We are a very niche payroll solution. So therefore, what we do is we ensure that number one, your rates are consistent and comparable with your peers. And number two, <clears throat> that 
your payroll is broken into the appropriate number of departments to best utilize workers' compensation rates. Okay, I'm going to give you a very quick example. We took on a client uh, beginning of this year. She had come from a third part, a different third party payroll solution. She was a fairly large gymnastics school, 40 or 50 employees, maybe 35 to 45 employees. <clears throat> and uh, we took her on and we within the first week, we looked at her workers, con although her payroll service fees that we charged her were, were certainly less expensive. One thing that was a huge difference was her workers' comp. We saved her over $5,000 for this year alone in workers' compensation fees. And that will, of course, extrapolate for all the years to come in the future. So <clears throat> again, if you're using a large national provider, this is going to be difficult to do, but you're going to want to make sure that you're shopping your rates around the best you can. This is real dollars, people. We're not talking $100 or $200. We're talking thousands. It could be even... And probably not tens of thousands, but it depends on your payroll size, of course. So something that you want to do, again, is ensure that your workers' comp is in line with your peers and to split your business into certain and uh, different departments to utilize the best rates. Your workers' comp insurance agent should be a broker should be able to help you with this. Okay, something we do complimentary at Express Payroll. If you are in the gym, swim, dance, music, or theater business. Your payroll as a percentage of your overall revenue should fall in line with these statistics or these ranges that are on the screen. Gymnastics businesses, 35 to 50% of your revenue should be consistent with your payroll expense. Uh, so again, if, if your revenue is a million dollars, your payroll should be somewhere between $350,000 and $500,000. If you're a swim business, if your revenue is a million dollars, your payroll costs should be somewhere between $350,000 and $400,000. If you're a dance, music, or theater, your revenue is a million dollars, your payroll should be somewhere between $350,000 and $450,000. If you're in line with these ranges, these are the highs and the lows, <clears throat> then you're okay. Um, obviously, the lower they are, the better you are as an owner, the better off you are. But um, these are the ranges. If you're below or above these ranges, then it should be a red flag for you and you should speak with your uh, you know, professional advisors to find out there's things that you can do to help. One thing that we also do at Express Payrolls, we produce an annual survey of our clients. That survey goes through and takes <clears throat> into accounts for how much money you're paying for uh, st you know, your staff, whether it be instructors, whether they're managers, whether they're supervisors, uh, your, your office personnel, instructors versus private lessons. And we compile all this data by industry, by state. And then we, if interested, we can then extrapolate it and hand it back to our clients for them to see the ranges and where they fall. Now, of course, we don't um, put any names on it. Everyone's name is hidden. But as a, as a service for our express payroll clients, this is something that we do and produce on an annual basis. Lastly, this is, uh, I guess, second to lastly, this is the Jackrabbit and Express integration. Uh, express Payroll is a full service payroll provider. We, we provide its services in all state. And for those that use Jackrabbit, which I presume most of you do, you probably have stumbled across or are utilizing the time clock. We have a one minute payroll solution with time clock. If you're using Jackrabbit and uh, when you're done with your payroll and it's after it's approved, you just select the export button and the payroll is then completed. Um, Jackrabbit's integration it has a ton of new enhancements. Uh, we work regularly with the folks and the developers at Jackrabbit to ensure that we're meeting the needs of all the clients between the two of us. Um, we have over the years built a time solution. We also have a direct entry solution. We have a time clock solution, and we also have a full HR solution. Um, there are no setup fees and no hassles. Their direct depositor check is available for all. Um, we pay and file all of your relevant employment tax forms as well as taxes. And we also have an employer portal for easy access. As the employer, you can go in and run over 100 different types of customized reports. Your employees can get access to a, our app where they can view their pay stubs and W-2 forms. 
We have HR services available as well as an electronic onboarding service. And we have customer service seven days a week. It is not uncommon for us to hear Jackrabbit users come over that say, oh my goodness, I used to take, used to take me hours, sometimes a whole day to do payroll. And now I'm done literally with the touch of a button. So if you're not, if you are using Jackrabbit and you are using the time clock or you're not even using the time clock, I strongly would encourage you to please reach out to us here at Express Payroll, ask for a demo and a, and a no obligation free quote. We're typically uh, 30 to 70% less expensive than the major providers. And again, we offer a very customized solution to our friends that are utilizing the Jackrabbit business. We're specialized in the industries that I mentioned earlier, gym, swim, dance, small athletic, you know, daycare centers as well. Um, and we're, we're happy to help as much as we can with our clients, give you a free quote. Please reach out. Here's our contact information, express-payroll.com. There's our phone number, 877-774-3327. Or if you have any questions on the slides or any of the information I've talked about, or you'd like a demo or have an email specific, my email is sean at express-payroll.com. I want to thank everyone for attending today. I hope this was helpful, got you a few nuggets of information. Enjoy the rest of the Jackrab presentations and have a wonderful summer, everyone.